Hey, this is Mark Cuban, and you're listening to the Step Back, the best Mavs podcast ever. I like this, TK. I like that. Yeah, it's the Mavericks, all about action. Don't do no acting, no Samuel Jackson. Dirk at the ball, you know that it's magic. Post move deadly, yeah, it get tragic. Look with the ball, yeah, it get nasty. He'll drop 30, don't gotta ask him. Got Chris Stapps, coach at the Adam. I spaz like Dallas, set out on rapping. God, if Lucas shoot the ball, you know that it's cash. But my boy still living the past. Now he got my boy Chris Stapps, looking like Dirk and Nash in the gap. They just wanna ring, wanna fill the gap. On your team head, I ain't talking heads. Dang, I relax, still at the champ. Diva still coming with the calibers. Flow, the man's the best on the floor. All right, everybody, welcome in to another edition of the Step Back a Mavs Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Trigg. I'm joined, as always, by my Sports Illustrated Dallas basketball colleague, Matt Galatson. Uh, we have a really special treat for you guys today. Uh, we have the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, boss man, Mark Cuban. Mark, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Appreciate it. Enjoy the podcast. Yeah, and Mark, before we before we you know jump into some actual Mavs topics here I've got to ask you 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 haven't been trespassing at any gas stations lately have you (laughs) (laughs) that was pretty funny but you know I I gotta give this guy credit he did look a lot like me and uh, I don't blame him giving it a shot (laughs) (laughs) yeah as soon as I saw the headline before I actually saw the picture and so I was like I was like man I I don't know and then I looked at it and I was like oh come on (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> Matt, you want to start out with our first topic here for him? Sure, yeah. So, uh, Mark, obviously you guys have always been known as a franchise that really takes care of its players, uh, whether it's you know while they're employed with you guys or, or post-basketball or whatever. And you recently hired Nick Van Exel um, to, to work in your personnel department as a scout. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about that and uh, the thought that went into, you know, bringing Nick on. And, and, well, there's and, a couple things here. One, you know, anybody who's played for the Mavs for a few years and really laid it on the line for us, um, we always try to find a place in the organization for um, whether it's Jet, whether it's Nick, whoever, whoever Michael Finley, whoever it may be. Um, you know, once guys' careers are over, for, for most of them, um, it's difficult for them to decide what they're going to do next. And a great majority of them want to find a way to get back in the game or stay in the game and work for an organization. Now, Nick, Nick had worked for some other teams, but, you know, he came to us like, sure, we'll find something for you because, you know, he, he's seen a lot. He's, he's worked with other teams. He's been on multi, in multiple organizations. And so he, he provides us with a viewpoint that can only make us smarter. And, you know, we'll, we'll always do that. We'll always try to get our guys back in the game and, and try to learn from them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, it, we we saw it here recently uh, with the Texas Legends. You know, Jet, he's back too. He's he's not yep. with you know the Mavs technically, but I mean, the Legends yeah, the are Legends, an extension. I mean, we own the Legends now, so you know he is and he isn't right. He's six and one half dozen the other. We right. You know, there was a spot open with the Legends, and Jet can help Al Whitley, who's taking over running the Legends. Um, and so between the two of them, and and you know, and Nick will contribute there because. You know, now, with particularly with the two-way slot, you, the, your the G League team and the NBA team have got to work closely together because there's going to be a lot more back and forth to play. Right, right. And, look, we think that's great what you do with, uh, you know, former players. It's one big family. Uh, you definitely get that vibe when you're, you know, when you come into the arena and you're around the players and the, the staff and everything. It, it's really great to experience. And, you know, just moving moving on to uh, some actual basketball here, Mark. We're really interested in getting your thoughts on one. Finally, getting to see Kristaps Porzingis in live yeah. NBA action for the first time in you know nineteen twenty months, and uh, you know talking about him and Luca establish, establishing the Mavs culture in the post Dirk era. So uh, let's start with that. What what are your thoughts? Finally, getting to see him in action. That was great, obviously. I mean, I'm excited for him. You know, he's still finding his way. You know, you don't just not play an NBA game for for a year and a half and then all of a sudden walk in and everything's fine. Right. You know, whether it's J.J., you know, finding his way after only be, being done like eight months or, you know, the experience we had with Wes Matthews, the experience we've had with other players. You know, you, you've got to get give KP a chance to get his legs underneath him to get used to NBA contact and, and recognize that even a preseason game, even though particularly the youngest guys are playing as hard as they can, it's not the same speed and intensity 
as a regular season game. So, you know, he, he's going to go through adjustments. And, and you could tell, you know, he starts off really solid and, and you know, he gets a little bit tired a little bit sooner. But he's, he's getting his win back quickly. And he played better last night than he did games before. And he'll play better against the Clippers. And, you know, and, and hopefully those improvements will keep on coming. But, it's, and, you know, then you put him with Luka. And, you know, Luka's the best point guard he's ever played with. And so as we get our rotation fed and, and, you know, guys are used to playing with each other, I think, it's, I think it's only going to get better. I mean, we haven't seen the best of those two together. You know, we haven't seen the best of our rotations yet. So it, it, it's exciting. It, it's not going to happen overnight where everybody's playing at an all-star level, but we're going to get there. Yeah, and then just branching off on that on that second point, I mentioned too. I mean, how how do you feel about those two guys leading uh, or shaping the Mavs culture in the immediate future? Obviously, they're young, uh, they're yep. still learning. But I mean, how how do you feel about them? Well, you know what? The, the Mavs culture has been there. You know, you know they were here with Dirk, and JJ is still here, and Coach Carlisle. Obviously, the organization has pretty much stayed the same. And it's not like okay, Dirk walked out the door, and now all of a sudden. KP and, and Luke are going to, you know, make things a lot different. It, it really, I think, you know, good teams with great culture, they that stays established after your your Hall of Fame players have left. And and so I, I don't think it's really them creating new culture. It's going to be more just continuity of the existing culture. And that's important because it means guys stay comfortable. And we've got a great group of guys. I mean, everybody gets along. Everybody you know, there's, there's, I always say you can have one knucklehead on a team, but you can't have two because and they hang out <laughs> together. We don't have any knuckleheads, and that's a good thing. Yeah, so um, obviously having two stars like that uh, is is absolutely huge going forward, especially given their age and their talent level. And But across the NBA, there's been uh, a new development of parity with all the two-star teams with the Clippers and, you know, everything that happened this summer. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that and what it could possibly mean for the Mavs in the playoff course now that everything's a little more balanced. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, you had the Warriors with five All-Stars, that, you know, and so that that was difficult. And, and now, you know, given who they've lost, it, things have become a lot more balanced, which means the West is wide open. It's going to be competitive as hell, but, you know, it's going to be dri- the, the teams at the top at the end of the season are going to be defined as, as much by who gets hurt and, you know, what what – crazy things happen, what players emerge, what players fail off, um, as anything else. And so, you know, given our, our youth and hopefully, you know, our depth, then I think we have a really good chance not just to make the playoffs but to have an impact. Yeah, yeah, I, it's definitely exciting times with the Mavs and uh, everybody. It's about time we got back into the mix, isn't it? Yeah. It's been, <laughs> it's been, Absolutely. It's, it's killing me. It's yeah. killing me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long three seasons, but I mean, you can just feel a different vibe around the organization. Oh, yeah. there's, there's renewed optimism, uh, and oh, I mean, yeah. it's and it, it's not far fetched to say that this team can make the playoffs this year, especially if you know KP oh, no, can stay not. healthy. Yeah, I mean, I agree a hundred percent. You know, I'm not, I never make predictions, but we certainly have the talent. We've got to stay healthy. That's the most important thing. Um, but beyond that. You know, we just have to keep on getting better as the season progresses. You yeah. know, like I said, you know, you've got JJ and AD who haven't played an NBA game in a long, long time. And so they're gonna, there's going to be some adjustments there. There'll be some adjustments as everybody figures out their roles, uh, do plays together. But you know, as we come together as a unit and and, and get more comfortable um, on the court, I think we're just going to keep on getting better and better as the season progresses. Yeah, and I, I think the I think the chemistry aspect of it is something that can't be discounted either because, like you mentioned earlier, everybody on the team you know loves each other, and you know, we saw yep. it we saw it when the guys got together. Most of the guys got together in Miami before training camp even started, yep. and you know had a team bonding experience. And uh, you have to figure that that's just going to get stronger and stronger as the season progresses. So. Uh, yeah, you can't no you can't really put a price on on good chemistry like that. But no, gonna, I agree 100. We're gonna move into our last topic here. We appreciate you spending some time with us this morning. Sure. Uh, well, recently, uh, California passed a bill that, uh, starting in 2023, uh, it would allow NCAA players to uh, potentially get paid for their likeliness. 
And I wanted to get your thoughts on if if you think that's a good idea or not. And then, I mean, how about the G League? Would that just would that be a better route for these players to take in the no, there's meantime? A things. There's, there's, there's different sports, right? And so each sport will handle it a little differently. But think think about the implications there. So let's just say you're a kid coming out of high school, picking, or let's say you're a junior going into your senior year, picking what school you want to go to when, whenever you choose. First, now kids already have a social media following, right? And so the first thing it does, it puts more pressure on them to build more of a following while they're in high school. Because if you're able to sell your likeness in college, why can't you sell it in high school, right? right. And if you can sell it in high school, well, you know, the more social media followers you have, the more money you're going to make. And even if you can't sell it in high school and you can do it when you get to college, then the big question is going to be, all right, you know, which which school is going to be on TV the most? Which school is going to give me the most visibility? Which school is going to give me the most playing time? And oh, by the way, school, what are you going to do for marketing my brand? And so now you have to deal with these ancillary issues that are not just about going to school and playing your sport and winning at your sport. Now, right. I'm not saying they don't deserve it. All I'm saying is it'll change the dynamic. Part two to that is, you know, there's no law that says that colleges have to belong to the NCAA. And so because the dynamics change, it's not inconceivable that investors can come in and say, okay, um, UCLA and USB and other teams that are in California, you know, let's, let's group together and we'll, we'll not be in the NCAA. We'll find other schools that are open to similar situations because other states will probably pass same type of law, and we'll just create our own league that's outside the NCAA with our own rules. Okay, but particularly for basketball, that works great. You know, which yeah. leads to your question <laughs> about the G League. I've, I've said it before. If you've got two million followers on Instagram and you're already selling merchandise, like I've seen some kids do, um, then why not go to the G League, which is not under the NBA CBA? And because of that. If you can go into the G League and get a $2 million shoe deal, why wouldn't you do that instead of going to college? Right. You can always take classes during the day or during the off season and get your degree. They're not mutually exclusive. But if you can get a good big shoe deal, a big endorsement deal, um, rather than going to college, you know, let go to the G League, which is why I think, you know, the NBA and the NCAA are looking to change from one and done to none and done. So that kids coming right out of high school can go right to the NBA you know, or right to the G League more easily. So, the, you know, it's not just a simple question of, okay, kids get to sell their likenesses um, and get sponsorship, et cetera. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? There, there's a whole lot of rules of, and laws of unintended consequences that come into play that we have to try to, to play out and see what happens. Yeah, uh, well, that that's very well said. A lot of good points brought up there. And, I mean, especially for the guys that are, you know, um, top recruits, top talent guys, they if they can go to the G League, like you said, get that two million dollar shoe deal and all these other uh, They don't even in- have to be the best players, right? If they you know, if they're dunkers and, you know, they just happen to have great great followings on, on, right. on Instagram, right? If if you're on Ball is Life and Dunk and et cetera, et cetera <laughs> you know, every other day and people are just hamming you up, right? Then you could get a deal because you're gonna sell shoes. Absolutely. Well, look, Mark, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, it, we'll appreciate have, it, guys. We'll, we'll definitely have to do it some other time, so we appreciate it. You got it, man. Let hey. me know. Thanks, Mark. All right, guys, that was Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, we'll have him on at some point in the in the near future, I'm sure, but it's really good to hear from him. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back on the other side and discuss what we talked about with Mark a little bit more. Stay with us. All right, guys, we're back. Again, that was Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Had a lot of good things to say there. Matt, what, what's your initial thoughts from our, our brief interview with Mark? Uh, so the, the thing that st- stands out to me the most is obviously the, uh, the stuff about the NCAA and the player likeness and all that jazz. Man, right. I, I, I thought it was a good idea, and I still think it is, but I – None of that other stuff that he brought up ever crossed my mind, and I was just blown away. Like, he's such a smart guy, 
and thinks yeah. about every Out. little conceivable <laughs> financial angle to everything. And um, it's I, that I mean, it's crazy. It really is. How, how you know how in detail he could just come up with that stuff. <laughs> and yeah, uh, he made a lot definitely of really good a, points. Definitely an outside the box thinker for sure. And I mean, he made some really good points, and you can argue it one way or the other. I mean, for selfish reasons, I mean, I, I would like to see the players eventually uh, get paid for their likeliness just so we can have those awesome NCAA uh, football games that we used to have. I need it. Uh, back back in the day. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm sure Mark uh, doesn't care at all about that. But, I mean, that – that's every time I see something come up about NCAA players potentially getting paid for their likeliness. That's that's automatically what I think about. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, it's been what? Let's see. I think twenty NCAA twenty fourteen was the last one that came out, so it would have come out in thirteen. It's been six years since we've had that. Yeah. And what's funny? What's funny is the NCAA fourteen game. I played it with uh, I played with my little brothers periodically, especially like around Thanksgiving when everybody comes together. And the funny thing is that game is like almost just as good as what the new Maddens are now. So it holds up. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I, I can only imagine if they would have been able to work on it, you know, for the past six years and, and what it would be today. But. Well- you know, other than that, other than the NCAA stuff uh, we talked about with Mark, you know, he just it's not a it's not a secret that everybody within the Mavs organization is super super optimistic about this upcoming season, which is right up my alley, as you know. But uh, irrational confidence I mean, guy. But that's that's the difference here. It's not irrational this time around. Well, it it, de- <laughs> not, it depends on the context, but yes, you're right. Well, I mean, yeah. If I if I come out here and say the Mavs are going to win the the 2019 2020 NBA championship, then then it becomes irrational. But to say that this team can make the playoffs is not far fetched if you consider health and you know the abilities of the players around uh, Luca and KP. You know, a lot of these guys still have, you know, a good bit to prove, but they have the abilities, and we've seen flashes of that throughout the preseason. And if there's any questions about any players on this Mavs roster, Luka is not one of them. You know, he is he has been absolutely amazing throughout this preseason. He's only through his 3 games, he's averaging 22 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists and two steals in just 26 minutes per game. Uh, So, like, his per 36 numbers are 31, 12, and 7. (laughs) That's not bad. It's not bad. And he's shooting 41% uh, from the three-point line, which includes the occasional unnecessary step backs that we think he should, you know, cut down on and do more spot-ups. But uh, Even though we very much appreciate the – the name of our podcast it needs to (laughs) take a little bit of a a step back if you will in his game yeah 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 good pun there matt good (laughs) (laughs) but uh you know even his free throws like that first game against detroit uh he went five out of ten and we were like ah here we go again well these last two games he shot 22 free throws which is crazy and uh he's hit 19 of them so uh, obviously he's he's worked on that yeah, just I think a, it was it's just another you know indication of um how much his game is you know progressed and the, the 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 comp that I had with James Harden uh when he was when he was coming into the draft is even yes. more on the nose not because he flops obviously but because he's good at <laughs> he's he's good at drawing contact and he's good at you know um bringing players in close to him because you have to get close to Luke. Otherwise he's just going to shoot on you all day or he's going to blow by you. Yes. And, yeah. Um, there, there's a, look, there's a ton of similarities between Luca and James Harden's games. The, the biggest difference though, is like you said, there's no unnecessary flailing. There's no, he's not like, he's not trying to deceive the referees. He is just able to get his defenders in a position to where they actually foul him. So, 
it, it, it's more of a how can I put it's it's more of a pure way <laughs> of drawing fouls than what James Harden does. Well, yeah, I mean, there's other differences in their game, obviously, but um, most of it to me has to do with the athleticism. Uh, James Harden is one of the best athletes in the NBA, uh, but for, their style of play is very similar, and um, you know, Luca needs to do a little bit less of the step backs and. If he ever tries a running three, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go nuts. But <laughs> hey, um, he's already done it before. Yeah. I saw a video surface. Uh, you know, he was like 16 or 17 years yeah, old for yeah, yeah. That Real still Madrid. Me off. <laughs> he was the first one to do it. <laughs> yeah, he was. But you know, not not an NBA game, please, Luke. I beg you. <laughs> Only if it's a you know absolutely necessary buzzer beater or something. Yeah. But uh, you know, just just branching off of that, uh, you know, like I said, Mark, he's really excited. Uh, he can tell that all the guys, you know, really, really enjoy each other's company. They've already built a a lot of chemistry together, and that should translate into some more wins this season. Uh, you know, which uh, you know, the regular season it gets started in less, uh, well, no, about a week from right now. So. Uh, next Wednesday, we'll be getting this thing started for real, Matt. And uh, the Mavs, they played their last home preseason game uh, last night against the Thunder. They completely blew them out, 107-70. to And, you know, we've already talked about Luka. We've talked about KP and, you know, how he looks good physically. And he's doing, you know, the little things, even though he's rusty on offense and – you know, he's rusty with his shot going down. He's still doing the little things, uh, altering people's shots. He only had one block last night, but I, I counted at least five times where, you know, he made the defender miss because of his length. And he had 13 boards in 26 minutes. So that, that was really good to see. That's what stands uh, out to me the most is his rebounding has been very good in the preseason. And that's, yeah. you know, we talked about it last week with Kirk. But that's that was the biggest knock on him him coming into to Dallas was you know where were they, where are they going to get the rebounding KP doesn't really rebound that much blah blah blah, blah. well you know thirteen tonight or last night um, I, I can't remember how many he had in the last game but he he was still very you know I think it was uh, around seven or eight maybe I I can't look right now but. You know he's he's doing those those things on the boards that you really want to see, and he's you know he's putting up good numbers and not a lot of minutes. The shooting's gonna come. It like I have no like it doesn't just shooting just doesn't go away. Like he just right. needs to get back into the game flow, and you know get his feet wet ju- and settle in, and he'll be <clears> fine. <throat> I just looked it up as you were as you were talking about it. Uh, but in 22.9 minutes per game in his three preseason games, he's averaging 15.3 points and 8.3 rebounds per game. So, yeah. so if you extrapolate that, that out to per 36 minutes, those numbers are going to be off the charts. And and 1.7 assists in the in those 23 minutes a game. So I mean yeah, that's there you go. He underrated passer for a guy his size and. I mean, they can they can use all of it. But uh, another guy that really impressed me, and it, it was a balanced effort last night. Uh, the Mavs had, I believe, let's see, one, they had five players in double figures. Uh, the the plus minus was you know absolutely crazy, which it always is in a in a blowout. Justin Jackson was a team high plus twenty two. Uh, he continued to shoot the ball efficiently, five of eight from the field. The step back. One player, uh, biggest <clears throat> fan, by the way. Yeah, yeah. We had one of our one of our good friends of the step back, Justin Jackson. Um, and but but one player that really stood out to me in last night's game, you know, before it got kind of messy at the end and you kind of tuned out, was Delon Wright because he's been incredible defensively throughout this preseason. Individual defense is really good. We've talked at length about his uh, perimeter defensive abilities. And last night, 
Uh, he finally showed us a little bit more on the offensive end, too. He, he scored nine points in his 27 minutes of play, went four of eight from the field. He hit a three, had seven rebounds, three assists, a steal. Uh, and, I mean, Matt, there, there was, you know, just like I was talking about with Porzingis, there was about five plays that he didn't get a block, but he altered the shot. It's the same thing with the line right. There were at least five or six times last night that, you know, he had a deflection or, you know, he jumped in a passing lane and altered a pass that, you know, turned into a turnover. Stuff that just isn't reflected uh, in the box score. And you see him do stuff like he did last night. And he even had he, – he ran a pick and roll with Porzingis <laughs> in, the, in the second half where he did the Luka behind his back, between the legs, you know, fake – a <laughs> fake off dribble and then pass it to Porzingis for a big dunk. So you you can see why DeLon Wright figures to be a big part of this Mavs team uh, going into this season. Uh, you know he's he's got some incentives built in there for you know if he play, if he makes one of the All NBA defensive teams he gets more money. A lot of people are talking about him potentially being a most improved player candidate. And, I mean, he seems to be a perfect pairing with Luka in the in the backcourt. And uh, he's just going to be a big factor going forward. I can see him causing a lot of disruptions and uh, getting the Mavs some turnovers when they really need it and, you know, stuff of that nature. So uh, any final thoughts on, you know, what you expect from DeLon Wright as we head into the season? No, I mean, he just – he, he fills a huge hole. And I, know, I know statistically the Mavs were good uh, defending the three last year. They're, you know, towards the top of the NBA, I think. Um, but, you know, he do, it's not just about that. It's about stopping guys from getting to the basket. It's about disrupting passing lanes. It's about a whole bunch of different things. And DeLon does all of that very well. You know, obviously – uh, I don't like him as a shooter, but hopefully he's not going to have to take that many shots because he's got other shooters around him. You know, Luca's shooting, what is it, 41% from three Yeah, uh, crazy. so far in the preseason. So if he can keep that up, oh my God. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, he he's in a very good position to be a huge contributor on a competitive team, and he won't have to score very much. And he can focus most of his energy on the defensive end and guarding the other team's best, you know, perimeter player. And it's it's going to be really nice to have a guy like that who's not, no disrespect to Wes, but who's not coming off of an Achilles injury and has lost a step and is aging. And, yeah, I mean, this guy's in the prime of his career, and he's only getting better. So uh, he's going to be a huge addition. Yeah, and Rick Carlisle spoke about that, uh, I believe it was on Media Day. You know, it it's a lot of uh, – the Mavs have a bunch of young guys, but it's not like they're extremely young and, you know, having to wait and see how they develop and everything. There's a lot of these guys that are either about to enter or they're already in their prime, and that makes a big difference. Uh, and I think we're going to see that on the court, you know, once we get underway. The Mavs, they'll – Travel to Vancouver to play the Clippers to close out the preseason on Thursday. And then next Wednesday, uh, we'll get things underway as the Mavs take on the Wizards at American Airlines Center on opening night. So, uh, Matt, are there any other thoughts here before we close this thing out? Nah, I mean, I, man, I'm, I'm really just excited to get the season started. And um, I want to thank everybody for sticking with us through the, the dead of the summer. And, and Absolutely. Uh, and you know we're you know we got another real exciting guest um, f- coming up for you next week, uh, and you know just keep your eyes trained on si.com/nba/mavericks, aka dallasbasketball.com. Yep, and guys, be sure to go to uh, our YouTube channel, the Step Back a Mavs Podcast, and subscribe to us there. Uh, we're trying to get to one. Uh, 1,000 subs uh, at some point this season. As soon as we do, uh, a lucky winner will get two tickets to the season, I mean, to the game of their choice. And so right now, if you subscribe, you're automatically entered into that ticket drawing. 
and the sooner we get to a thousand subs on there the sooner we can do uh, live broadcasting emergency pods stuff like that so be sure to do that uh, also be sure to like rate rate and subscribe on all your other favorite podcast platforms we hope you have a great week and enjoy the the Mavs last preseason game and we will see you guys next week y'all have a good one uh, a lot of times feel like I was on the road and nowhere tell me why all these people up in my face acting like I know them feeling like Luka Doncic rookie of the year I'm the coldest God speaking through me every single track profit like Moses asking why I gotta wait till I'm dead to go and get